Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt called Daybreak. Daybreak is a pattern that we've done before. This is a Cozy Quilt Designs pattern. They have it pictured in bright batiks, but I like to make it in darker Civil War colors. So the nice thing about their patterns is they give you a variety of sizes. We're going to do the throw size and we need 28 strips. So my husband Matt has already cut out 28 strips and put them in a package here. And he cut the accent and background fabrics. This will be the accent. This will be the border. And you can see behind me here a quilt very similar to the colors that we are going to be making today. So we're going to take the pieces over to our cutting table and we're going to do these sub cuts and we're going to cut out the accent and the backgrounds. The first thing we need to do is open up the package of strips and there's 28 in here but we need 16 cut one way and 12 cut another way so we need to separate this out into two stacks. So we've got a variety of nice prints in here got some greens and blacks, blues, reds. So we need to separate these out. I need 16 strips that are a little more colorful. And then my accent color is this dark black. So we've got some big stars on here and some little stars. And if I have any strips that are really, really dark, I don't want them up next to the accent. I want them in the small stars. I'll show you what I'm talking about on the quilt we already have made. Here's what I'm talking about. My accent color is almost black, just like that. So if I use this fabric right up next to the black, there's not much contrast. Now, if I use this fabric in here, that's fine because it's not right up next to the accent. All of these other colorful ones look really good next to the accent. So this being the third time I've made this quilt, I know, I know this ahead of time, so I'm giving you that hint. Here's what I'm talking about. This is not quite as good looking with the accent as if I had used this dark one up here and put maybe a navy blue down there. Here's the 16 pieces that will have the accent fabric right up next to them. Nice variety of colors. And then here's the 12 that will be in the smaller stars that won't be up next to the accent. Now everything is going to be up against the two backgrounds here. So the backgrounds, you can barely tell in the pattern, but there are two different colors of backgrounds. There's a very light green and then there's an almost white. So I am following that same color scheme. I've got backgrounds that are almost the same color, but there's two different prints. So all of these beautiful Moda prints, these are Kansas Troubles and Thistle Farm, they're all going to be up against this background. So I'm going to get ready to do some sub cuts here. These are the 12 fabrics that are going to be cut all the same for the smaller stars. So I have stacked them up. I've got three strips in each stack and I lined them up on my cutting board very carefully. Now, these have already been ironed because we iron everything before we put it into the package. But you may need to iron your strips to get them to lay this flat, especially if they were rolled up in a jelly roll. If they're not laying nice and flat, go ahead and iron them. So I'm comfortable cutting six layers. So that's what I've got stacked up here. But this way, I can cut them all at once and it saves a lot of time. I like to put my ruler on top of the fabric that I have not cut yet. And I like to put a weight up here that holds the plastic ruler in place. And I'm lining up the plastic ruler with the grids that are on the board. And the strips are on one of the grid marks also. So I get a nice straight cut here. So you can check the pattern to see what all size sub cuts you need. But see, I can get them all cut at the same time. Just stack all of these up like sizes together. So we've got one size and we've got another size. These are the pieces, the longer pieces for the bigger stars. And I had to go up a little higher so that I don't get more than three in a stack. And I can still cut them all at the same time. I just have to cut up a little bit higher. Ah. 
the pieces for the larger stars need to be matched up. So we're going to need to do one big and one little. We need to have the same fabric matched up. So we're going to put, we're going to match these up before we start. So we'll do that with all of these bigger pieces here. And then the stars will make a nice matching L. The one nice thing about this pattern, this is all the scrap I have. We use up almost every bit of the strip, so that's really nice. The only other things we need to cut are the accent fabric here, and it just gets cut into two and a half inch squares, very easy. And then the backgrounds, there's just three different sizes, but it, both of these prints get cut all into those three sizes, really easy cutting, so I'm not gonna bore you with that but I'm gonna get finished cutting and then we'll get started sewing. That is the fun part. I finished doing all the subcuts on the background fabrics and on the accent. So the accent was just the two and a half inch squares and we've got different sizes of the backgrounds. So I pulled off enough pieces for one block. This is a quarter of the block. I've already made one because it's much easier to follow this than just looking at the pattern. The first thing you have to do is you have to draw on the back side a diagonal line of some of your background pieces. You have to follow the pattern closely because some go that way and some go this way. So this is all the pieces we need. Remember these guys were paired up. We've got a pair, a short and a long, and then we've got the single guys for the smaller star part here. So first step is to sew these two pieces together. I'm just gonna line everything up and I'm gonna chain piece. So we're using a quarter inch seam. That's what we're always gonna use. And I'm gonna sew all four pieces and then I'm gonna snip the threads. Now we are just going to add one piece of background here. We're gonna add this piece. So when you open this up, it's exactly the right length, but I have to check my block or my pattern to make sure I sew it on to the correct side. So I'm always going to be checking that, especially if I'm going to be chain piecing because you could sew so many of them incorrectly. So this is going to go right here. And I know the seam allowance needs to go toward towards the black. Now I did not iron this seam yet, but we're going to do that next. So sometimes I will do two steps and then iron. So I'm going to take these over to the ironing board and we're going to get them ironed really, really flat. Here is how I like to iron these units. I'm going to pull it open so that seam is being pulled wide there and that way I'm going to get that seam. Now I'm going to iron the stitching there. It relaxes the seam so that it lays really flat. Then I'm going to open this up and I want that seam allowance heading towards the black side there. So I'm just going to kind of press it with my hands till it looks square then give it a little steam. So that way I can do two steps in one. I'm ironing that seam open up and because there's heat already on the fabric it tends to stay in place and you can keep it nice and square so this step goes really really fast so we've got the middle made here next step is this part here and I'm going to show you why we needed to mark the back of these we are going to line up our corners here and we're going to stitch along that diagonal and that's going to give us this piece right here. So even though I normally use the lines on my machine to sew these without marking, I can't really do that on here because I, I can't see where that point is very well. So I found it a lot easier to just go ahead and mark them. You're gonna stitch right along your marked line. And if anything, you're gonna stitch a hair over to this side. So be careful when you lay these out that they look exactly the same as the first one you sew. And that way you can chain piece and you won't get them facing the wrong way. 
the next piece we need to make is this one right here. So that's this piece, and we're going to sew on that diagonal, and then when we open it up, it's going to look just like that one. So you want to always check your pattern or make a sample block like I did. I find that really, really useful. And then we're going to swing this around, stitch right on the line. So I'm going to take my other four pieces and make sure they're lined up exactly the same way. Put this here and then stitch. So here's those eight pieces we just sewed, the shorter ones and the longer ones, and they're going to get ironed in a similar fashion. So I like to Press it flat and then open that up and you'll see that it's going to make one long rectangle. So you're going to have to use a little steam on that. Now when you open this up, you can tell pretty quickly if you've done a good job sewing on that diagonal there because this top layer should line up with those bottom two layers. And they are lining up quite nicely so then you can steam press it. And once we're done ironing, we are going to trim away those extra layers back there. Now we're just going to trim off the excess seam allowance fabric back there. So we're going to do that on every piece and it's not really a very big scrap that's left over so I'm probably not going to keep that for another project but you could if you want and I find this works really well just with scissors so I don't usually take it to the cutting mat and use the rotary cutter, but you can if you like. It's just a lot quicker to do it like this. You can see the block starting to build now. We've got the center section here. We've got the short side of the small star here and the longer side here. So now all we have to do is these outer two pieces. So we're just gonna add some backgrounds to the longer piece and a background to the shorter piece. So to make this unit here, we're just gonna take this shorter side. We're going to stitch here and open it up and that's gonna make that. So I'm going to take all of these shorter ones and sew them all exactly the same way. So this piece is gonna go right there. Now we just have to do this last piece here. So first step is to put this piece on. That's going to make it diagonal there and then we'll add that piece afterward. Now we just need to sew the little piece that goes on the far end here and I'm going to do that now and then I will only have to take these to the ironing board one time. So these pieces fit like this. So we need to put this piece on here and stitch from corner to corner. Now I don't mark the back of these blocks. You can if you like, but I have a line on my sewing machine. So all I have to do is put this corner right where the needle is and then put the far corner on the line. So all I'm going to do is put the corner of the block right up against the needle and put this opposite corner on the line and stitch all the way along there. Now, I have some quilters who tell me they can just eye this up. They can just point towards the corner without drawing a line. And they seem to be very successful at doing that, but I worry that I would have a crooked line. So that's why I drew, drew on the machine here, and that seems to work really, really well. Now we'll take these over to the ironing board, iron them open, and trim off the excess. Now it probably looks like I'm going in back I'm going back and forth between the ironing board and the sewing machine a lot. And I am for the first part of making this quilt. But once I know that I am making the blocks correctly, I'm going to just chain piece every, the whole quilt. I'm going to um, be sewing a whole lot before I get up an iron. And this is just one of those blocks that I can't really finger press successfully within the block. I really do have to iron this one. Now there's two sections to trim here. Again, it goes really, really fast. 
and it really doesn't matter if you're a little bit crooked cutting there because it's it's in the seam allowance it doesn't show now we're ready to put the block together so we're going to sew this and then this and then this and then this and we're going to keep these in pairs so i'm going to make sure that my first block has these two that match up and my next block has got two blues that match up you can make it and mix the colors if you want. There's nothing wrong with making your block like that. It's just a little more balanced if you do them in a pair. I've made it both ways and it looks really good the other way too, but the pattern calls for you to do it like this and that's what we're gonna do today. So this one's gonna go on here. Still gonna chain piece. I'm gonna sew these, all four of the blocks at the same time. And when I make the rest of the quilt, I'm going to sew all of the blocks. So this is a quarter block. I'm making four quarters right now. We need 12 big blocks, so I'm going to make a total of 12 times 4. I'm going to make 48 quarter blocks just like this. So I'm going to be chain piecing all the rest of them because it will go a lot faster. Now this is a spot where we can finger press. So these are gonna go right here. We are going to press this away from the wedge-shaped piece here. Now this piece is gonna go on there and I'm going to use alternating colors. So I'm gonna just check this out before I go. So we've got green there, blue here, burgundy here and a darker burgundy. So I'm probably going to put that one there, that one there, that one there, and that one there. And what I'm wanting is to get a lot of different colors in the star on these stars. So that's how I'm going to match these up. So I'm just going to put them like that and turn them all and then we'll sew down that side on all of them. So this piece fits exactly on here. They're really fun to sew and there is no intersections to match at all. Again, we can finger press this seam open and we are going to press it toward the wedge this time. And the finger pressing will work good enough right now, so I'm opening the seam up and pressing with the back of my fingernail. And that will keep it in place long enough for us to get our other pieces on. Then when we're all done with the block, we will give it a nice pressing. These pieces are now going to go onto these blocks here. So again, I'm going to pick which ones I want to go on where, on which block. So I think this one would look really good with that burgundy. You don't have to be this picky, you can just put whatever you like on any of the blocks. But I like to, when I have a chance, pick what's gonna go where. I like the green on there, I like the blue on there, and I like that brown one on there. So I'm kind of making the blocks colorful. So we'll just put that aside, and that aside, and that aside. So now we're gonna put this piece on and that piece on, and I'm gonna work with these individually. So this is gonna go here. and all the pieces just fit exactly. Again, you can finger press this open because we really only need it open right here for us to get our block made successfully and right here. So this is gonna go on here and I'm gonna turn it around. Again, there's absolutely zero intersections to match at all, none. And let me show you one of the best parts of this block. This is the best part. See all of these points here? They're perfectly pointed. There is really no way for you to snip off the top of your point when you're stitching your patchwork. And that's a problem that we have in a lot of patchwork. When we 
if we had a seam right here, the point might not be pointy. So even if your seams weren't perfect, even if you took your seam a little bit too big, you're still gonna get a perfect point here and here and here and here. Really fun to make. It's not even ironed yet and it really looks very exact. So you do have to think a little when you're putting these on, but it's gonna come out just perfect. All we have to do now is iron it really flat. Since we finger pressed these ones, you really can just take your iron and I like to do it with no steam at first till I know the block is flat and the seam allowances are facing the way they should be going. Then I'm gonna steam press it. Very easy. Is lay these out and then we're gonna stitch it both ways. So you can see the nice big star here. It just looks beautiful. But what you can't tell is that these, when you put blocks next to them, they're gonna make a nice little star. So when the whole quilt is put together, it looks really complex, but it's just made with this one block over and over. So we're going to make six blocks just like this with this color background. Then we're going to make six more blocks with the other background that's the same color, but it's a little bit different print. Then we just have to put those together and put the borders on and then we can get it on the quilting machine. Now we've got all the blocks together and the whole quilt is finished. So you can just see the two different backgrounds here. Just a little bit of difference. It makes a big difference in the finished quilt. The nice thing about this pattern is it's all done with two and a half inch strips. The patchwork, the accent, the background, it's all two and a half inch strips. Now we have this in a video bundle, of course, and Matt's got those all pre-cut for you. But if you're cutting your own, remember, just two and a half inch strips and some subcuts. It took about a yard and a third for the border here. The accent and the inner border took about a yard. I used another print on the back that's the same as this background here. So these are all Kansas Troubles prints really nice, deep, warm Civil War. So it's Civil War prints, but rich colors. And it just looks like you wanna just wrap it around you and snuggle up in front of the fireplace. Now we've made Daybreak before in a different colorway. So I've got that hanging up over here. This is the same pattern, a little bit lighter background and only one background. So all the blocks have the same background. The only difference between this quilt and the one I just sewed is these parts of the stars are not done both in the same fabric. I used different fabrics all the way around. It looks just as nice. It's just a different variation. It's a really, really easy pattern to make. This is one of those patterns that looks way more complicated than it is. You're always going to get nice crisp points on every part of your star. So you might look at the pattern and think, oh, it looks a little too hard. It really isn't that hard. And see, here's the big stars and there's those secondary little stars in the middle. Really fun to make. The quilt turned out about 62 inches by 78 inches. So it's a nice generous throw size. And one of the nice things with the cozy quilt design patterns, there's a variety of sizes included in the pattern. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on the pattern Daybreak.